Whether you just ordered your Orgata or you've had one for a while but would like to get the most out of it, I wanna welcome you to my complete beginner's guide to the Orgata rower, where I'm gonna be going over everything that you need to know to have a great experience on this machine. So to get started, first you're gonna to need to make sure you have enough space. When the rower is laid out, it is a little under two feet wide and a hair over seven feet in length. Although when you have it stored upright, it only takes up about two feet in either direction. Additionally, you may want to purchase a workout mat to collect all the sweat that's gonna be coming off of you as you row. Personally, I don't use a workout mat for the rower specifically because I like to have this in my living room standing upright where it takes the least amount of space and it kind of doesn't make sense to have the long workout mat right underneath it. But if I was to have the Ergata in like a garage or a space with more room where a workout mat could just be permanently placed, then I would probably get one just to protect the floor from having to collect all of my sweat after every workout. Finally, the last thing I do suggest that you have before you get your Ergata is some sort of surge protector. This is just to protect your rower in case of any kind of electrical issues. The last thing you want is to have your Ergata's tablet completely fried just because of a freak accident. So to get your Ergata set up, the first thing that you're going to need to do is fill up the water. Now on the water tank, there are lines here that help guide you and Ergata suggests that you fill up the water to the line number 17. And I suggest that as well, unless you have a very specific reason why you wanna have it lower or higher, it's not necessarily gonna give you more or less resistance. It'll mostly just change how the rower feels. So I really suggest everybody just use the standard 17 at least to get started. Now to strap your feet in on the Ergata, you need to first set the level of your foot pads. So for these foot pads, you're gonna to wanna to have the ball of your foot match up with the line holding the foot pad because that's really where you're gonna be driving off of and where you'll be able to get the most force. So you're gonna to wanna to push the center button and lower both of the foot pads to the same place. Then just note that these straps are both connected together. So you kinda wanna make sure that they're even before you put your feet in. And then it's as simple as just sliding your feet and tightening them up. One thing that I have noticed is that it can be a little bit difficult to get the straps as tight as you want them. And so the trick to this is that when you take the strap, you don't just pull it across, but you pull it away from the foot and then pull it across. And that just helps give you some leverage to make the strap a bit tighter. Now, the next thing you should do before you start rowing is learn and understand a little bit about how the technique works. So I really suggest when you start the Ergata, go to the Getting Started program, which should just kind of be flashing there for you, and go through their series of videos that lead you to your initial 1000 meter assessment test. Now this test, whether you've done it before or not, can be really, really tough. And so just make a goal of getting through it. Even if your form's not perfect, even if you're really hurting and it's really difficult, just try not to stop. You can slow down, but just keep going. And that'll allow Ergata to have an initial calibration for you to start giving you suggestions in your workouts that make sense relative to your current level. Don't worry too much about it. God is gonna automatically recalibrate these settings for you every 10 workouts or so. So as you improve your technique and as you become a better rower, the Ergata will recognize that and make the workouts more difficult to adjust for it. And I'm not gonna go over how to row or the technique behind rowing in the video here because that could be an entire video or series of videos of their own. But I do wanna suggest two things. One is you really should film yourself rowing with like your phone or whatever, because it's hard to know, even though you can see somebody else row and you feel like you may be doing it right, it's really hard to tell unless you can see some video footage of yourself. So that's gonna be very useful. And two, if you're having any kind of mobility issues that don't allow you to get in the correct positions, you know, that's gonna be very, very common. To row well, it requires a lot more mobility than something like biking. So what I'm gonna do in the description below is I'm gonna post a few links to videos 
of mobility exercises that could really help you out on the rower. The really biggest thing is having tight hips and hamstrings, which don't allow you to get in this kind of catch position really well. A lot of times people will be hunched over or your knees will be flared out instead of kind of directly in line with your toes. So that is super common and it's something that you can improve quite a bit on by doing some mobility exercises fairly regularly. So make sure to check that out if you really want to get into the best positions and be the best rower possible. Finally, after you finish your calibration test, as I mentioned, all of the workouts and push programs will be adjusted automatically relative to your current fitness level and you'll be placed into a ranking. I believe these go from like one to like 13 or beyond. And this is just to help those of you who are competitive who may want to work up the rankings or if you're trying to race against other people, you may want to set up like the racers to others who are in your same division. So the first thing that you're gonna do, maybe a day or so after your initial calibration, is to start doing you know, some workouts. And I really do suggest that you start with a push program. You just find that right here. You're gonna be browsing through any of these. And there's a couple that I suggest. One is the starter series. That one's really good, but it's also really long. It's 15 weeks long. So if you want to commit to like a really thorough beginner program, that's probably the best one to start with. But there's other ones here that are designed for beginners, like rowing for beginners, that are only, this one is only like 10 days long. Maybe you wanna find a program that you can set a smaller goal first to complete. I think that's a really good idea. And this program is specifically designed to do that. If you're an intermediate or somebody who's been rowing for quite a while, I'd probably suggest doing one of their intermediate programs. And if you want to try the advanced programs, definitely go ahead, but be aware that they are for advanced rowers, meaning that like, if you've had rowing experience, you're probably not advanced yet because some of them are very, very difficult, very long, and you should probably have some regular rowing underneath your belt before you jump into those. At least that's my suggestion after trying a few of them. Now, if you don't feel like jumping into an actual program and just want to select individual workouts, you can definitely do that. All you do is select interval training, and from here you can select meteor or pulse. Now, Meteor is the one where you're gonna be collecting tokens by holding various paces, and you can browse through a variety of these workouts here. There's, there's tons of them, but you're probably gonna to wanna to dial it in to be more specific to like whatever time that you have available, and if you want a certain difficulty or distance, or if you want like more of a hit, endurance, or technique workout. One suggestion though is don't really use the difficulty guides on these because I have found them to be not very accurate. I'm not sure how they're exactly determined. The other type of interval training is pulse. And what's cool about pulse workouts is you'll see these 1M little workouts, this 1M. That means this workout was created by another Ergata member who has rowed 1 million meters on the Ergata. That's a special thing that they allow you to do when you hit that benchmark is to create your own workout, which I think is really cool. So you know, be careful with the ones that are created by you know, community members. Uh, some of them are really great and some of them are insane but you can kind of browse again through those. And on Pulse, you have a bit more variety in terms of the type of workouts you wanna choose from. If you want the focus to be on your split time, your strokes per minute, or a hybrid of both. And we'll talk about the hybrid workouts in a minute, but those are a little bit advanced, so probably stay away from the hybrid workouts if you're newer to rowing. Next, we have races, and races are a great way to test yourself and just be competitive if you want to get a high score. I really like to do like the benchmark test. So you'll see here, they have like a 10K, a 2K, a 5K, always at the top here. These are kind of like standardized tests outside of that calibration test that I think are really good to occasionally test your and race against yourself with to see your own improvements. But they also have the race of the week which you know, changes every week. And if you have people or rivals that you want to compare and compete with, this is a great way to do that. And they have a whole variety of different types of races that you can choose from. Some are just more standard and other ones have you know, intervals and rest periods mixed within them. So a lot of variety here. 
Next we have open row, which allows you to create workouts for yourself. You can set like the length of the workout. You can create custom workout intervals, which I'll go over in a second. And you can just do a free row with no time limits, just kind of cruise at your own pace. And since these workouts aren't specifically gamified like Ergata's other workouts, you can do them to a scenic ride and they have a variety of different ones available. Now the ability to create your own interval workout here, I think is pretty cool. And the way you do that is you click set intervals and you just create each interval either by time or by distance. So let's say I wanted to do 500 meters, then I want to have a one minute rest. So you can do that just by selecting, you know, it says rest, no or yes, yes. And then I add another interval and I wanna go back to a 500 meter interval. Next, I wanna go back to a one minute rest, right? And then you can have this set up finalize those intervals, choose your music or whatever, say I'm ready, and then it's ready to go. Next, let's take a look at your dashboard or your profile. And here you can get a sense of all of the workouts and how much you've really done with your Gata. And you can look at this daily, you can have a weekly setup or even a monthly graph. And it'll show you how many workouts you did, what your total number of meters rode were, your average split, your personal records, all kinds of cool stuff. Then you can go to workout history if you want to see all of your workouts individually and this is kind of nice because you may want to consider retaking some of these in the future there's also milestones and these are just like badges or awards that you can collect by hitting different benchmarks like rowing 10k 50k 100k like i said all the way up to 10 million meters and you get them as well for completing different programs and they also have monthly challenges that you can do so let me go back here and show you the monthly challenges so you just click challenges and it's the community challenge so for example, this month, you need to row at least eight different days to get the first level, 12 different days for the second level, 16 different days for the third level. And this changes every single month. And what's cool about Ergata is that they contribute money towards some sort of fundraiser based on how much you do. So if you get to level one, two, or three, they'll donate so many dollars towards that fundraiser. Something just to give you a little bit more incentive to make sure that you hit those monthly benchmarks or rewards. They also have private challenges here, which is nice. You can create your own challenges to compete against other people with. Now, if you're wondering how to see your rivals, you just click on rivals and it'll show you everybody who you're you know, friends with and you can see their most recent workouts and total meters road. Uh, you can also find rivals through rankings. So you can search the rankings and see where you are in the month relative to how many meters you rode or your average pace. And you can adjust this based on what you wanna see. So you may want to click my class and my gender and my age and then go to your rank to get a sense of where you are. And then you might find some people that you might want to add as your rivals near you just to give you some competition or to have some other people you can check out what they're doing. All right, so now let's go through a quick meteor workout. So I can go over a few things that I think you should be looking out for when you're rowing. So we're just gonna go to interval training, meteor. We're gonna select a short one here. So on the setup screen, on some workouts, you can select whether you want that workout to count towards your recalibration. Remember, the Ergata recalibrates your assessment based on your previous 10 workouts or so. So maybe you are doing a workout and you don't really wanna push yourself, you feel a little bit tired, and you don't really want that to be a reflection of where you are right now. It's normally on yes, and you would just select no. Now right here, the screen is grayed out because this workout is either too short or something about it that Ergata doesn't want to use it anyway. Here you can also select your audio output, whether you want to use a tablet or any headphones. You can also choose a music station to listen to, and you can also have it attached to any heart rate monitor that you are wearing. So now we're gonna get rowing on this, and there's a few things I want you to kind of look at on this screen. First is the split. So you see right here, I'm about 225 out of, per 500 meters, all that means is that it would take me about two minutes and 20 seconds to go 500 meters. To the right of that is the stroke rate, so 24 SPM. All that means is that at my current rate, I'm gonna get 25 strokes or pulls per minute. To the right of that is my power output, so that's kind of a combination of your split and stroke rate 
in your calories burned as well, of course. On meteor workouts, you try to stay in this lane, right? And you try to hit these tokens. Now, one thing to note is you don't have to be in that lane the whole time. If you're getting really tired, you can dip underneath it. And if you get the timing right, you can pull right into the token. You know, especially if it gets really tough, right? On that sprinter pace, you may not be able to get all the way up there, but you can kind of stay towards the bottom. Of course, it's only if you need to. Otherwise, you know, you can definitely stay in that lane or even slightly above it if you really need to. Now, active rests are great because you can continue rowing if you want to, and I usually will, but this is the perfect opportunity to grab some water because otherwise you really don't have the opportunity, especially during longer workouts, to have your hands free. So active rest, definitely use the opportunity to rehydrate. All right, so once you finish the workout, you'll get the final complete screen that shows you your complete score. And then you can see your rankings relative to anybody else who did it. And at the end, you can get this little graph of your power output, your total time, your splits, and all the information. And what I like here is you can push this heart button if you really like the workout and you wanna save it for the future. And what I also like is this camera button. And what that does is it'll send a screenshot of this graph and this page to your email so you can repost it to social media or just keep it for your own records. You save your stats and any meters that you rode will go towards your overall milestones and it'll show you how that's progressing. The other workout I did wanna show you real quick is a pulse workout. And it's one of those hybrid workouts that I said is a bit tough for beginners. Um, so let me just show you why. So this is just a three minute workout. The idea of these hybrid pulse workouts is to show you and teach you that your stroke rate, meaning how much you pull per minute, doesn't necessarily mean you're going harder. And in fact, you can pull slower and still have a harder output. And this concept of keeping your stroke rate slower, but being able to increase your power output can be really tough to figure out when you're just getting started along with all of the technique and everything else. One thing I do like on this screen though, is you'll see the pull line. So I'm gonna try to get lined this line that goes down, if you follow along with it, it really helps you figure out your stroke rate. So you only pull when it's going down and you go back slowly, just like it's going up slowly. And that'll help you get in line with that strokes per minute. And then keeping the strokes per minute, I'm gonna be able to increase my power output. So I'm not gonna pull any faster, but I'm gonna put more into each pull and see if I can get the ball all of the way up into race pace at this low stroke rate. And this is not easy to learn. And this is why I suggest not doing these workouts right away as a beginner when you have so many other things to focus on. And in terms of accessories that I suggest that you get for the regatta, there's actually not a ton here because everything that you need, you pretty much should already have. But the few things that I do suggest if you don't have one is a heart rate monitor. Most simple heart rate monitors will connect to the Ergata tablet, but my favorite is the Whoop armband. And that's just because it does more than just track your heart rate. It does a lot of analysis on your recovery, your sleep, and gives you suggestions about how hard you should go on any given day, which I think pairs really well with the Ergata. If you have an Apple Watch, you may want to look into the watch link. Now I have one of these that I originally got for my Peloton because I was having connection issues back when I was wearing the Apple Watch regularly to connect it to the Peloton, but it also works with the Ergata. And so that is something you may wanna look into if you really want to utilize your Apple Watch and have it pair with it. My next suggestion is to get a good set of wireless headphones as the sound system on the Ergata really isn't that great if you've heard it. So if you wanna to listen to music while you work out, either put on something on the speakers or get a nice set of wireless headphones. Now, girls typically know what's up with working out, but for some reason, guys, I find don't. But you really need to make sure that you have some sort of like compression shorts when you row. I know some people don't wear compression shorts when they do these types of workouts, but honestly, you're gonna have a much better and more comfortable time if you have a few pairs. So I really suggest you get some if you don't already. Now there are rowing gloves available, and I know some people find them more comfortable to use. 
I personally don't find holding onto the handle much of an issue. And I think that outside of the initial discomfort of continually pulling and feeling like you might get some small blisters, your hands will toughen up a bit. But if you're worried about getting any kind of calluses and you don't really want that, then you can definitely look into gloves. I believe you can find some pretty cheap on Amazon and Ergata might even sell some on their own. And finally, if you don't have one already, maybe look into some sort of floor fan just to get some breeze going your way as you will be working up quite a sweat working out on this thing. And it's nice to have some extra airflow. And luckily this Ergata is really close to the ground. So you don't really need any kind of clip on things. Something that just sits on the floor will probably do just fine. All right, final tips. So one, some workouts on the Ergata, depending on how recovered you are or how well you're feeling, may seem overwhelmingly too difficult. My suggestion when that happens is not to quit or give up, but just follow along to the workout, but don't actually meet the requirements of the workout. And what I mean by that is, for example, like the Meteor workout, if it's asking you to be at race pace, just try to hold the pace right underneath there. And yeah, you're not gonna get a great score, but honestly, who cares? You're trying to get a good workout in, you're not quite ready to meet the demands of what it's asking you for, and what's gonna happen if that happens frequently to you is the Ergata rower is gonna learn that in the recalibration and then be able to better adjust your workouts for the future. If you quit every time a workout is too difficult for you before you finish it, then Ergata may not save it and use it to recalibrate. And then you may continually just have harder and harder workouts that aren't really designed for your current fitness level. The next tip is in regard to changing out your water in your tank. Honestly, you don't really have to change out the water in your tank at all. Ergata provides you with some tablets that you can put in there to keep the water looking clean. And they suggest you put one in there every six months or so, and they will send those out and provide those to you for free for the entire time you have your Ergata. So no need to worry about ordering more. If you're finding yourself low on them, just send them an email and they'll send you some extras. Also included with the Ergata is a little kit to keep your wood looking nice and they have the directions on there. It's pretty easy to do. You just rub some of the oil on there every few months or so, let it dry, wipe it off, and let it dry some more. And that'll keep the wood just looking really, really nice. If keeping the ergata looking really, really nice is important to you in the long term. And my final suggestion for you is if you aren't already, make sure to join the Ergata community group on Facebook. I know not everybody uses Facebook all of the time, but I think it's worth it just to be in this group. It's a very encouraging, very motivating, and there's a lot of people there that can help answer any questions that you have. And the Ergata team themselves post there pretty frequently regarding updates and challenges and different things going on. So it's definitely worth checking out and being a part of. And that's it for our complete beginner's guide to the Ergata Rower. My name is Colin Jenkins with Connect the Watts. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more tips and videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great time using your Ergata rower.